Today we are talking about King Arthur. Now, I've made quite a few videos on King Arthur in the past, but this is going to be more of a complete guide and overview. There's still a lot of confusion regarding King Arthur's ability leveling, regarding builds, and a lot of misinformation going around as well, so I figured, okay, let's clean this all up and let's get it out there in one compact format. I will still link all the other guides that I have and all the other parts of information regarding King Arthur in the video where it's suitable, but this one is going to summarize it all. This guide is going to focus on King Arthur in Season 6, because I think it doesn't really make sense to make a guide for Season 5 at this point, so we're going to have to assume that changes from the PTS are going through into life if something changes and you can figure out for yourself which part isn't applicable. Let's quickly, before we go into the details of the guide, go through the changes for Season 6 and which one actually affect King Arthur. First, there is a new solo lane objective, which is something that makes King Arthur a little bit more suited for solo as it requires damage and aggression. Furthermore, Warrior's Blessing is buffed, the heal is increased from 30 to 40, and the protections are increased from 10 to 15 on the evolved form, meaning it is a lot better as an early game choice once again, and make it a viable choice for King Arthur that way. Runic Shield got a buff with the health being increased from 100 to 150, might be having an impact for him to a lesser degree. And Seedley got its price increased from 2000 to 2150, it's still going to be good for him. Blackthorn Hammer has its power increased from 25 to 35, and the passive now procs at 25% mana, meaning it's overall better, which is good for a god like Arthur that already makes decent use of it. Runeforge Hammer also got buffed, but I will tell you later why that's not relevant for King Arthur at all. Stone of Gaia got buffed, which may be a counter to King Arthur because it now has a lower cooldown and heals faster and as King Arthur revolves around one knockup, that is something that hurts him a bit. Ragnar's Mask now increases ability damage by 20%, which may or may not be relevant for him, we'll talk about that in a bit. His base health has been increased, like all warriors, by 10 HP and the HP per level is plus 3 on top of what they already get, so another 70 HP extra in total. He also gains faster energy from Twin Cleave and Bladestorm, meaning he can use this ult more often, and the range on Sundering Strike was lowered a little bit. With those changes out of the way, what role is King Arthur, especially in Season 6? I am of the opinion that at the moment he is a better jungler than solo laner. There's a lot of his kit that works better when you can build certain items and you don't really have the opportunity to do so in solo, but in Season 6 he may be getting a bit more of a shot at solo as well. That is due to the fact that the new objective helps him, that we are generally going to see a lot more pressure and aggression in solo lane because of this objective and because of the item changes and warrior changes in general. This doesn't mean that he's going to win every matchup though. King Arthur especially has a problem with sustain heavy matchups, which he can't really bully out of lane. One guard that for example comes to mind that I haven't seen in a while that could potentially be a nuisance for him is Kamazots, who can heal himself up a lot and also has good pressure on that new totem. So we'll have to see how exactly it goes for him. Either way, I think in his current state he can be played in both jungle and solo and with season 6 it will be more of a tie between both roles. Now for some pros and cons of King Arthur. On the positive side, he has super high mobility with 3 to 4 dashes depending on the situation. He has a high flexibility when it comes to his playstyle, especially due to the fact that he has true damage and a tiny bit of protection shred. You can go into a relatively tanky build or you can go more bruiser and both works really well for him. He has very high damage for a tankier character and he also has high disruption meaning he can easily interrupt the backline both with abilities and due to his presence as well. His main weaknesses are cripples and walls that hinder his mobility because he is very reliant on moving around a lot and he can't get through walls and if he has a team that doesn't play with him. Now this goes for every character of course but he is a guard that doesn't have an easy time solo carrying a team because he does a lot of setup and he has good burst but often his burst is not enough to single-handedly finish off a target. So when you chunk down on enemies and you distract them, then you want to have a team that can follow up on that. For his leveling order, it's rather simple, because the only thing that's really, really, really set in stone is leveling his one first. It's just his main clear, his main damaging ability, and that goes for wherever you play him. For the second ability, you have more of a choice. You can either max the three, or you can max the ultimate. 
The reason to level 3 would be that you get a lot more damage consistently, but it's sometimes not that worth it because sometimes you will use the 3 more to avoid damage and to get out of situations where you can't finish off a kill, so in those situations it doesn't really help much if that has a lot of damage. The ult, on the other hand, is a different beast. Now, the problem with the ult is that often you will not get enough energy to get your charged up ult in many fights and you will just use the weaker version. For that one, leveling it doesn't really do that much. It just increases the base damage a little bit and it's not really worth it in my opinion. The amped up version, on the other hand, goes from 14% true percentage damage, so you have true damage in a percentage value taking out the character, to up to 22%. This is not accurately reflected in the tooltip at the moment. The tooltip is wrong in game, but you can check in jungle practice. The damage goes up uh, at the highest rank for the last strike of the ability. So for that, it's technically nice to have a super high true damaging ability, but with the long cooldown, technically, I guess, with the fact that you will have to stack up combo first, it can sometimes not be worth it. It should be a little bit easier now, but still, it's a decision to be made. The second ability is the one that I would probably almost always max last. I've toyed around with maxing it after the first ability for a better setup combo with higher damage, but at the end of the day, neither the extra damage nor the slow seem to be worth it compared to the other abilities that seem to offer more. So your order is 1, 3 or 4, then 3 or 4 again, and then 2. In early levels, in solo, you probably want to start with the 1, then into the 3, then sometimes even the 1 again and then the 2, whereas in jungle you typically want to have the 1 on the first level, then the 2 on the second level if you want to gank with a blink in mid lane for example, and then the 3 on the third level, though that can also be flexed depending on the situation. Let's talk a little bit about his playstyle next. There's one combo that you should definitely keep in mind. That combo is the 2 in combo stance, the knock up, into the 1 in your normal stance, and at the same time, you want to hold down your basic attack, so at some point in that chain, you will land a basic attack and then the one in combo stance. That way, you get a high amount of burst damage off on a target while locking them down for most of the duration of that. And most guards can't get out of that quickly enough. There's one other combo that's worth keeping in mind just to get away from enemies quickly. Two in the combo stance, again, the dash this time to create distance with a basic attack beforehand that's cancelled into the 2, then a basic attack after and while the animation is going off you're going into the 3 in the normal stance, do another basic attack into the 3 in combo stance, into another basic attack I guess if you want to, so just keep channeling that uh, until you are in safety and you can even add your ultimate afterwards if it's charged enough, but usually you're far away enough from the enemies anyways. It's also very much worth keeping in mind that your 3 makes you knock up immune. So when using the 3, you will be able to avoid a lot of damage, kind of utilize it the same that you can utilize Thor 3, even though you may sometimes lose some damage. Especially the initial spin damage isn't too big of a loss, the big swing at the end is the big damage of that ability. You can use your lunge to get out of CC areas, which I guess to some degree helps against the fact that he is countered so hard by cripples, which interrupt two of his abilities. If you use your basic attack and you're at the edge of, for example, a Nox Silence or a Poseidon Whirlpool, or even in a Nox Root, then you can reposition yourself to wherever you're lunging to. The lunge does not count as a dash or as a mobility ability in that sense, so you can get away with it. It is also possible to juke with the lunge, but not always. The problem is that the lunge, the basic attack lunge, will lock onto targets sometimes and that happens when they get too close. So if you're trying to juke an ability and somehow you get into the aggro range of the enemy and just jump right into their face, you obviously won't juke that way. So if you're far away enough, then you can use that against mage attacks, for example, but often you won't be able to. Arthur's upgraded ultimate is a little bit awkward because the enemy can get out of it relatively early and create some distance after it has finished. As such, you don't want to use it to engage, but rather to finish off a target, and quite frequently you want to use it as an execute. Sometimes you can use it as setup though, if you know that an ally is around and for example is charging up a big ultimate, like a Thoth ult for example, then you can most definitely pick out a target and have them in the air so your ally can prepare. This is especially one of those situations where you have to really assess the skill of your teammates if it's going to be worth doing that with them, and if they have the right guards for that. 
If you're interested in more mechanical advice on King Arthur, I recommend checking out the video that I linked above. I made a ton of tests with King Arthur for mechanical things, so you can learn a lot more there. In this video, we will now move on to the build and item section. And here I want to talk about stat value first, because I think it's very important to understand what items generally make sense for King Arthur and which ones don't. So the most important stats on the damage spectrum should be very high up if you're looking for damage with King Arthur are of course stats like penetration and protection reduction that will always be great because it affects all your damage but even power is very nice on King Arthur. His combined scaling is up to 525% and we get to another item that benefits from the scaling as well so power really is a very strong stat for him despite the fact that he's a warrior. In the defense department he's equally flexible if you're building health or protections, really, it both is good for him. So those should be your primary stats. But what's relevant after? Now the next one, I think, is cooldown reduction, even though that's a bit contradicting. On one hand, King Arthur has a lot of abilities. That means, technically, you will almost always have something up, and cooldown reduction in that context isn't that necessary. If an enemy isn't dead after you use all your abilities, then he'll probably not die if you have two more abilities in most cases either. However, having that many abilities also means that you have a lot more abilities that are affected by your cooldown reduction, so you will have a lot more total reduced cooldown, which is something that, on paper at least, is very, very nice. As such, in my opinion, it's very good to invest into items that have cooldown reduction and benefit him, but it shouldn't be items that primarily focus on cooldown reduction. It should be items that have other benefits for King Arthur and are generally useful for him and happen to come with cooldown reduction. That way you get enough damage, you get enough defense and you can still get some cooldown reduction along the way and some useful passives. Focusing too heavily on reaching the CDR cap as soon as possible is something that is just not very beneficial for King Arthur overall. Mana and MP5 are very good for Arthur because he has a lot of abilities. At the same time, his abilities aren't exactly mana hungry. So it's nice to invest into it a little bit when you can and when it's useful, but you shouldn't go overboard. Crowd Control Reduction is also a stat that's very nice for King Arthur, due to him being mostly shut down by CC with his super high mobility. And that brings us to the stats that really aren't all that beneficial. HP5, because you don't really need it. You have enough sustain in other ways most of the time, and especially if you have your glad shield online, you shouldn't really have to rely on that. Movement speed, due to the fact that he has mobility that is not tied to movement speed. All of his dashes do not change in distance at all through movement speed, and neither does his lunge, and that is most of his mobility. You will hardly ever run around in a fight and actually not be using anything else. As such, movement speed really doesn't do much. If you need mobility, it would probably only be to get from A to B and that should be covered with MP5 and his movement abilities or otherwise I would recommend going into Talaria instead of investing into specific movement speed items that are otherwise not very beneficial for him. Lifesteal is another stat that he doesn't really make any use of. He doesn't use enough basic attacks for it to be worth it and you can argue for Soul Eater a little bit but we'll get to that later. Attack speed is a stat that I also wouldn't invest into. It's a nice bonus when an item has it and the other stats are fine, but outside of that you shouldn't be looking to build it because the combo building with it isn't exactly that much faster. And last but not least, crit is something that you shouldn't really build on him, even though somebody will probably, just because I said this, do a full crit King Arthur video. And as we're already on things that you shouldn't build, a few items that I want to talk about. Mystical Mail. There really isn't too much of a point in building Mystical Mail on King Arthur unless the entire enemy team is full of physical defense. He has so much damage in his abilities and you can invest into other items that amplify that much much better through either protection reduction or through CDR that Mystical Mail really isn't very beneficial for him. Runeforged Hammer. It only works with the slow and with the duration of the ultimate where the enemy is banished in the air, not the last hit, so very limited extra damage here, not worth it. Frostbound Hammer doesn't proc on his basic attacks. Again, I will refer to another video here if you want to know about the rest of his janky item interactions. And last but not least on the not to build part, a little bit of a comparison here. There is an item that is sometimes debated on King Arthur and that is Blackthorn Hammer. There's also another item that is sometimes debated on King Arthur and that is Masamune. 
and I want to show you this quick graph here, which is just that. It's just effective health. The stats you want to look at here are the last two rows. And what you can see here is that the effective health that you get from Blackthorn Hammer is much, much higher than the one that you get from Masamune, both for physical as well as magical, even though I calculated Masamune with three stacks here, so three enemies around, and that's almost ideal for Masamune already. You're not gonna have five enemies clustered on you and survive it somehow. And you also see Spirit Rope and Magi's Blessing in comparison. What you can overall see here is that Magi's Blessing gives you a little bit more survivability. This is on a level 15 Arthur with no other defense item. And Spirit Rope is also around the same area, a little bit less physical, a little bit more magical, effective health. So they're all around this same spectrum. But different from the other two, Blackthorn Hammer comes with power. It comes with 35 power in Season 6. Masamune has 50, a little bit more, but at the same time Masamune just overall has somewhat wasted stats when you look at the survivability of Blackthorn while still providing you with damage and CDR. And Spirit Rope and Magi's are obviously for different purposes. So what you can see from this is if in mid game you're looking for a defense item, if you need it, go for Magi's, go for Spirit Rope, if you have to deal with heavy CC. But if that's not the case, then Blackthorn Hammer is a great choice for him. And I will always recommend Blackthorn Hammer over Masamune if you're looking for a damaging option, because Masamune comes with movement speed that you're paying for, and it's also relatively expensive, and movement speed, again, doesn't do all too much for King Arthur. If you're actually looking for another defense damage hybrid item, you may be better off if you already have, for example, Void Shield and Black Thumb with getting Shifter's Shield, because that way you get more protections when you really need them, and you can heal up with Gladiator Shield if you still have that, than with Masamune, and you get more power as well. So I would really not recommend Masamune either. And on the other hand, I would recommend Blackthorn Hammer when you can afford to invest into it. Blackthorn Hammer also helps with other hybrid items that you can build that often don't have that much health. You kind of cover it that way. Now let's look at builds that you can build. I would first look at jungle here and then at solo. In jungle, you want to start with Assassin's Blessing, of course, and I would recommend a tier 1 mace. That is because the next item we're going to finish is going to be Warrior Tabai, and that's in almost all cases, unless you really want that extra movement speed from Pelaria. And then the next item you want to finish is Crusher. Yes, Crusher has attack speed. What does Crusher also have? A passive that gives you extra damage every time you hit an enemy with an ability. That means a little less than 120 extra base damage and 90% scaling between your six abilities without the ultimate. Now, you usually won't get all of that due to the ticks overlapping a little bit, but you will get enough of it. And the item still has 30 power and 15 penetration as well. For jungle, this is God's gift to King Arthur and nothing really competes with it in terms of early game damage output. I would not recommend considering other options unless you absolutely need brawlers for your team. In solo, you will oft not be able to fit this in, and this is one of the reasons why I personally prefer King Arthur in jungle. It really amplifies his early or mid-game aggression from being that kind of like okay poke guard to someone who can really bully and snowball if you get the right game. The next item that's of course always going to be good on him is Gladiator's Shield. Also an item that works with proc effects and you have a ton of abilities to proc it, so you get a ton of health and even mana back. And that mana part is very useful for King Arthur, who spends a lot of mana through his abilities if you keep spamming them. Other items that are very nice in jungle are for example Ancile, Magi's Blessing, as I said Blackthorn Hammer when you can fit it in, Void Shield, and really anything in the Bruiser to Defense department, also including the items that I will talk about in the solo lane section in just a second. Some items that are a bit more eh situational are Rangda's Mask, which I think is often just too risky because you just ends up taking too much damage then and being too easy to focus down and Titan's Bane simply because most of the time you're better off getting some bruiser items and focusing on the squishies in general. You're not really gonna go after tanks with King Arthur. Obviously if the game goes on way too long then sure fitting the Titan's Bane but most of the time I feel like you're not really gonna get to that point. In solo things are a little bit different. Your starter item will most of the time be Warrior's Blessing. The start with Tier 1 Gladiator's Shield generally feels a little bit risky and unrewarding to me, especially with Warrior's Blessing being buffed. Then your first full item will usually be Warrior Tabai. You can also go into Tank Boots, but generally I would say having a little bit more extra clear and extra aggression is something that is very useful for King Arthur. 
In most matchups, as long as it's a physical, especially, you want Gladiator Shield. Whereas if the pressure is too strong from a magical guard, then you're better off building something that counters them. Which magical counter exactly that is, we'll get to. Three items that are always nice on King Arthur, both for jungle and for solo as well, are Height of the Urchin, if you are able to get the stacks throughout the game, because it increases the survivability of a mobile warrior by a ton. And likewise, Spirit Robe and Mental of Discord. Major's Blessing, I guess you can also get in solo, but I prefer that in jungle most of the time. For physical defense, your primary choice should be Void Shield due to the protection reduction. Just ramping up his damage even more is super, super nice for him. Height of the Nemean Lion if the enemy team is very heavy on DPS and you can't face tank it. Or Midgardian Male if you're looking to counter them out a little bit more and set up for your team. It is maybe not ideal because he doesn't really need to slow enemies in that sense and he already has a slow. But at the same time, dealing with an extremely mobile guard while you're slowed yourself is extremely frustrating and that can really pay off for King Arthur. In the magical department, your primary choice should be Pestilence when it's useful at all. If you don't need any anti-heal, I would generally say Oni Hunter's Garb is the nicest option here because it just gives you so much survivability. Now, obviously there are other options as well. Runic Shield is buffed and may be more interesting now, especially has a little bit more aggression potential. We'll have to test how good that really is. Uh, I would say that both for Breastplate of Valor and Genji's Guard, the same thing applies that I said earlier. They are very cooldown focused and typically King Arthur doesn't work too much with cooldown to the degree that that's necessary. They are not horrible. I wouldn't say don't ever build them, but I guess it's more when you really need that specific defense in a specific situation. I have built them before, but I wouldn't recommend them as primary choices most of the time. Talisman of Energy is something, on the other hand, I'd mostly not recommend, as King Arthur himself doesn't really benefit from the stats there with movement speed and attack speed, unless you're only getting it for your team. Also, a few words on Soul Eater here. Some people think that Soul Eater is a must on King Arthur, others think it's absolutely horrible and the worst item choice from ever. I think it's okay. I think in most games you won't be able to use it effectively, but at the same time it's the same idea as with any other Soul Eater Glade to Shield Guard that has a fair bit of AoE and King Arthur covers all those things. He benefits from the power and CDR, not so much from the lifesteal, but the ability lifesteal is still nice. But again, it makes it easy to counter as well, because then you're so focused on healing that the enemy will just build anti-heal. So yeah, it's so-so in my opinion, and in most matchups there's probably something better for you to build. And then last but not least, a quick look at the relics. In Soul you probably get teleport in most games, in jungle you want to start with blink. This is due to the fact that it enhances your combo a lot and makes it super easy to hit the 2-1-1 combo. So you want to use it for that most of the time and it just increases his already insane mobility and makes him almost impossible to catch. It's a similar situation to Sir Cat. I originally didn't recommend it, now I highly recommend it. And with that, I think we've covered everything that I wanted to say about King Arthur. I'll probably remember some things later, but again, I've already made all these other videos you can check out where I talk about King Arthur more and where you can get more details on the specific aspects you're looking for. And with that, thank you guys very much for watching. I hope this was interesting and insightful. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to click the like button, that helps me out. Also, if you're looking for more guard guides, feel free to check out T's channel. She makes a ton of guard guides that you can find right here. And also, if you're new to the channel here, feel free to click the sub button, maybe the bell, it really helps me out. Other than that, see you for the next one tomorrow. Duke Sloth, out.